This is not a Kegel. This is definitely not a Kegel. And this, Jesus Christ, this is not a Kegel. This is bullshit. How is it that such a simple move can be so misunderstood? In this quick video, you're going to learn what Kegels are, why they're important, and how you can perform them in three different ways for best results. You guys, I'm like really smart now. You don't even know. This is your pelvic floor, a structure of muscles that supports your bladder, your uterus, and your rectum. When these muscles are strong and healthy, your pelvic organs work properly and sex feels great. But certain factors such as aging, pregnancy, childbirth, obesity, or certain chronic diseases can weaken these muscles, which can lead to conditions such as urinary or fecal incontinence, pelvic pain, organ prolapse, or even passing gas from your anus or vagina when bending over or lifting. The sad thing is, most women are so embarrassed to talk about this that they miss out on a very simple and effective treatment for this. Kegel training. Kegels were first described by Dr. Arnold Kegel in 1948 in his paper titled Progressive Resistance Exercise in the Functional Restoration of the Perineal Muscles. These simple contraction exercises allowed his patients to regain strength in their pelvic floor. And ever since, Kegels have been used to effectively treat urinary incontinence and organ prolapse. In recent years, though, these moves have gained popularity for their sexier functionality, as in increasing the strength of orgasms and pleasure from penetration. So thank you, Dr. Arnold. We've made plenty of videos on this, so go check those out if you're interested in learning more. For the purposes of this video, you should know that Kegels are a phenomenal exercise not only to prevent and reverse the effects of a weak pelvic floor, but to enhance pleasure during sex. In fact, they're the very first building blocks in the art of pompoir or vaginal gymnastics that we teach in our book, The Goddess Method, as well as in our online course, The Olympus Program. Of course, all of these results will only occur if you perform Kegels the right way. So let's see exactly how you can do this. To start doing Kegels, I want you to sit on a chair with your back straight and the soles of your feet on the ground. Once you get a hang of the movement, you can do this laying down, on all fours, or standing up. In fact, if you're planning on performing these during sex, which I strongly recommend, I wanna ride. You might want to practice performing this throughout the different positions you will adopt during sex. Now inhale through your nose and as you exhale, lift with your pelvic floor muscles up. To do this, imagine that you're trying to hold in your pee or holding a fart. You're pulling in with either your vagina or your anus. Because the pelvic floor muscles surround both, you can start by using either example that helps you pull in with more strength. What's important though is that your glutes or butt cheeks stay relaxed. You only want to be lifting in with your pelvic floor muscles. This should feel like a strong pull inwards and up. This is the complete opposite of pushing out if you were trying to deliver a baby or power pee, which you shouldn't do by the way. Power peeing, I mean, have as many babies as you want. After you do one strong pull inwards, inhale again and completely relax your muscles fully let go of that internal pull. Congratulations, you just did one Kegel or one short contraction. Perform 20 of these in four different positions, so you can do them at different pelvic floor angles and make sure that you're inhaling as you relax and exhaling as you contract. And most importantly, that you're never ever holding your breath. Do this whole workout four days this week. You shouldn't feel your abdominal muscles involved at all during this exercise. If you do, you might be pushing out rather than contracting. If you're still unsure whether you're doing this exercise correctly, consider setting an appointment with a urogynecologist or a pelvic floor physician. They'll be able to tell you whether you're contracting properly or not. As you progress through this exercise, see if you can focus that pull inward in your vaginal region rather than your anus. 
While the pelvic floor structure surrounds both orifices, we want to prioritize the muscle fibers around the vaginal canal if your goal is pleasure during sex. Just like there are different types of squats or deadlifts, there are different types of Kegel exercises, and training each will help your pelvic floor muscles in a different way. For example, you can do isometric contractions or long Kegels. This is when you lift your pelvic floor muscles up when you exhale, but rather than inhaling again and relaxing, you hold that contraction inside of you as you continue breathing in and out normally. This is a great way to judge your progress. If this is your first time doing long Kegels, you probably won't be able to hold that strong pull for longer than 10 seconds. But as you keep practicing, you'll be able to hold for 15, 20, and even 30 seconds. Don't hold for longer than that though, or you might risk injuring your pelvic floor. To start practicing long Kegels, do three sets of 10 second holds in four different positions. And you can do this again four times this week after your short contractions. The next type of Kegels you can do are eccentric contractions. To perform these, simply inhale, exhale and contract, and then as you inhale again, slowly relax your pelvic floor, making sure you pay special attention as to how it feels to go down each level of your vagina. Eccentric contractions, also called focusing on the negative part of a lift, is a well-studied concept in fitness. In fact, muscles are at their strongest during the negative portion of a movement, or the relaxing portion, where the muscle fibers are stretching rather than contracting. This type of training is great when you're experiencing a strength plateau, or feel like you're not advancing in your vaginal fitness as you should be. This exercise is also great to gain a better sensation on the different vertical levels of the vaginal canal, or the transverse plane, as we call it in Pompoir. However, you don't want to overdo eccentric training, as it can leave you a little bit sore. So perform 10 of these eccentric contractions, slowly down and focusing on the relaxing part of the movement, in four different positions. But do so only two days this week. Finally, we've got passive Kegels. These are the movements that your pelvic floor muscles will do passively when trying to hold on a Kegel weight, for example. These tools are great for when you don't have enough time to work out, since you can simply insert the Kegel weights in, leave them for 15 minutes to 2 hours, and continue with your regular activities as your muscles try to support that weight. The issue with these is that some women are allergic to the silicone some of these weights come in, and depending on how heavy they are, they might be too light or too heavy for certain pelvic floors. So do your own research and try to find a brand that's made with a material that agrees with your skin and that offers a wide range of weights. I would suggest you only use these on the days where you don't have enough time to train. Giggles are a great way to build a foundation of strength in your pelvic floor and enhance sensation during sex. But they're far from everything that your vagina can do. In fact, Kegels or contractions are the very first beginner-friendly exercises we teach in the Goddess Method book and in the Olympus program course, before we move on to the truly impressive stuff. So, if you want to learn more about these divine feminine powers and join the selected group of women capable of squeezing, milking, locking, whipping, twisting, and even ringing, Join the Olympus program at goddess.com. As always, have a good night, goddess.